Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamaruddin Andani. In our previous video on cephalometric analysis, we concluded that when we trace cephalometric radiograph for diagnosis of our patient, then we have to compare the skeletal and dental components of our patient to the norm. Now there are two methods for comparison. You can also go for measurement analysis and you can also go for template analysis. In our undergrad and postgraduate teaching system, we always look for measurement analysis and we learn that. But you should also know that there is another type of analysis that exists which is known as template analysis. So let's see what is that. Now this is a normal cephalometric tracing of a patient or normal person who has a skeletal class 1 relationship. Even there is no problem in the dental component. Now this is a tracing of a patient with skeletal class 2 and you can clearly see that there is mandibular retrogonadism which is the major cause of class 2 relationship in this tracing and probably some protrusion of maxilla is also there but the major component is mandibular deficiency and because of that there is excessive overjet and lower lip is also averted. So from extra oral features of this patient and this cephalometric tracing it is very evident that the problem lies in mandible not only in sagittal plane but also in vertical plane as well because of which she has reduced lower facial height. But to validate our visual findings we have to compare this cephalometric tracing with the norm and for that you have two methods you can go for measurement analysis and here i am just giving you an example that when you will measure the length of her lower jaw and compare with the norm belonging to the same race then you may find deficiency of the growth in the lower jaw and because of that her lower facial height is also reduced normally the lower facial height is 55 percent of the total anterior facial height but probably in this patient you may find that her lower facial height is just 50 percent or even less so this is the basic concept behind measurement analysis in which you perform the measurements and compare the measurements in the norms. Another way to diagnose is to get a template of our normal face and just superimpose on the cephalometric tracing of your patient. This is template analysis. Coming back to my previous example, this class 2 patient in which you have seen mandibular deficiency and this is a template of a normal face of the same age. You just have to superimpose and compare the results. Now here one question arises, at which point you will superimpose? If you want to evaluate the maxilla and mandible, that how much protruded or retruded both the jaws are as compared to the cranial base, then you have to superimpose on SN plane, particularly at nasion. Now you can see there is an obvious difference in the position of anterior nasal spine and point A not only in vertical plane but also in sagittal plane. This shows that maxilla of your patient is growing a little bit excessively in sagittal and vertical planes. However, the mandible seems to be retrognathic since the point B, pogonion, nathion and all other landmarks on the anterior part of the mandible retruded. In this way, you can do general superimposition and compare the upper and lower jaws of your patient with the norms. But if you want to compare the dentition of your patient with the norm, then you can superimpose maxilla and mandible individually or separately on a normal template. Now this is a normal template on my right hand side which you have to superimpose on the maxilla of your patient and maxillary superimposition is performed by placing the template on maximum contour of the palate. Now you can see that there is some extrusion of dentition in your patient. You can also see some difference in the ANS and point A area as well. Now superimposition of mandible separately. The point of superimposition is lingual cortical plate and if possible and visible then you can also use mandibular canal shadow to superimpose both the tracings. Now here you can also appreciate some difference in the length of the mandible and along with that some difference in the dentition as well. Now the question arises 
that do we have those template available in my country we do not have that and i think that this is the right time to work on that and make templates for your own populations the template available right now are derived from two major growth studies one was burlington study and the other was broadband bolton study in these studies the templates were made but there was little difference between both the templates in michigan study or michigan burlington study templates for all different ages were made in a single template however in broadband bolton study there were different templates made for each age group as you know that you cannot use the template of a child like age of 7 or 8 years and compare it with the adult so in bolton study there were different templates the terminology for those template was anatomically complete template the template which i have shown is anatomically complete template because there is a single template of a particular age which i have used in this presentation but if you look at schematic template it will be somewhat like this the template for different ages in a single template i hope you have understood a little bit about the difference between measurements and template analysis thank you very much and have a good day